Have you noticed that recently anime titles have gotten, well, wordier? Like, is it wrong to pick up girls in the dungeon? Maybe you've also seen Hensky, are you willing to fall in love with a pervert as long as she's a cutie? Or uh, do you love your mom and her two-hit multi-target attacks? And my personal favorite, if I don't successfully pick up 420 girls, I'm going to die in a lot of different ways. Nice title. So, what in tarnation is even going on here? Was there a secret character limit on anime titles that just got upped and now everyone's making long titles just for the heck of it? Maybe. But what all these anime mouthfuls have in common is that they all started off as light novels. What are light novels? Probably about eight ounces. Sorry, that was just a little dad joke for y'all. First off, you know that they're books. It's right there in the title. And you probably know that they come from Japan. You might even know that they have something to do with anime. But to get to the truth, we must dive deep into the exciting world of international publishing. Wait, what? In Japan, light novels are called Raito Noburu or Ranobe. Raito Noburu is literally just how a Japanese speaker would say the English word light novel. This is an example of Osai Eigo, or Japanese made English, where English or other loan words are given new meaning in Japanese. Fun fact, the term anime itself is a wasai ego of the English word animation. Light novels usually include manga style illustrations or even panels, most often printed in black and white at the beginning of chapters and when new characters or locations are introduced. These are usually full page illustrations, sometimes with panels and sound effects, and they tend to be short, hence the term light novel. Many clock in around 300-ish pages, around the same length as a western novella. They use more familiar kanji and often employ food Gana, the small Japanese characters that hang around the kanji to help with pronunciation. Light novels are usually bunkabon or A6 size. And if you're North American, that means absolutely nothing to you. Yes, there is an international standard for paper sizes, and you would know that if North America used it, but y'all don't because why, why don't y'all use that? For context, the collected manga volumes you read while sitting on the floor of the Barnes & Nobles are tankoban size, or B6 size. Most mass market paperbacks in Japan are bunkoban size. Think of them as the uh, Japanese version of the airport novel. The closest we have to this system can be seen in a comic book store, with manga mostly in one size, western superhero comics in another size, European comics another, and indie comics are, well, whatever format you want. The best way to tell if what you're reading is a light novel is not to flip through the content, but to look at the back cover, where you can find the book's label. Now, it's time for Tim's business talk. If you buy a book in the US, there's a good chance that it was put out by one of the big five. This is sounding like some anime villain squad reveal. Anyhow, those five publishers have about 80% of the market share. These giant publishers have dozens of smaller imprints with each imprint focusing on a specific genre or market, such as literary fiction, romance, young adult, comics, etc. In Japan, publishing works in a similar way, with big media companies having smaller imprints or labels dedicated specifically to light novels, and different labels will publish different types of light novels. Even if you haven't read a light novel, you probably know the plot to a lot of them, because they've been the basis for dozens of animes over the past 20 years. Bakano, Durarara, Fate, Full Metal Panic, Toradora, Sword Art Online, Overlord, ReZero, Violet Evergarden, That Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime, and so much more all started life as light novels. At its peak in 2012, the most popular light novel series were selling over a million volumes a year in Japan. That's a lot of bunkabon. And while they're still not close to doing manga numbers, titles like One Piece routinely sell over 10 million copies in Japan alone. A million copies is still nothing to laugh at. Okay, so light novels are books put out by certain Japanese publishers with easy to digest text and manga style illustrations. But where did the light novel come from? According to a 2016 article by Kim Morrissey for Anime News Network, the term light novel originated on a sci-fi and fantasy forum around 1990 by a user who enjoyed the illustrated genre fiction coming out of major Japanese publishing houses, but disliked the established term YA or young adult because these books appeal to more than just young adults. But the genre itself existed long before 1990. While it's hard to pin down an exact date, the creation of publisher Sonorama Bunko in 1975 is often often credited as the start of the genre. Sonorama Bunko was an imprint of Asahi Sonorama, a company established in 1959 to release audio news magazines on actual floppy disks called flexi disks. Imagine going out and buying a record of the daily news. 
While the sound quality wasn't great, the flexible records could easily and cheaply be bound into magazines, which is exactly what Asahi Sonorama did. While the floppy news slices weren't a hot seller, a boom in pop culture in the 1960s led Asahi Sonorama to pivot to more fan-oriented content. They had success with the magazine slash record combos that featured popular manga and movie characters. So why are we talking about old ass flexi music technology? Because this combination of different types of media is at the core of what makes light novels special. Take, for example, Sonorama Bunko's most successful title, Vampire Hunter D, a light novel series which features a fantasy setting and Yoshitaka Mano's gorgeous illustrations. Would Hideyuki Kikuchi's story be as popular as it is today without Amano's iconic artwork? It's hard to say, but the combination of manga-style drawings and an easy-to-read fantasy novel was a winning combination, and one that other publishers were quick to copy. The practice of expanding popular content into other mediums is known as media mix, and it's a huge part of how the anime industry works. Our producer Jesse might have summed the media mix up best. Always be branding, always. And if any company is the ABBA of the media mix, it would be Karakawa, which owns Overlord, Sword Art Online, and ReZero, among many, many others. Karakawa Ginyoshi founded Karakawa Books right after the Second World War. Karakawa believed publishing played an important role into rebuilding post-war Japan, stating that through publishing quality literature, his company would persistently point the path towards the reconstruction and ordering of the culture of our homeland. This statement is still printed on the back of Karakawa books to this day. The media mix as we see today was the work of his son, Karakawa Haruki. Haruki took over the family business and immediately started shaking things up. He started by licensing and translating novelizations of popular American movies. Once the novel became popular, he would release the movie the novel was based on, using the novel as built-in advertising for the movies. But his biggest breakthrough came came with his holy trinity strategy, combining text, sound, and image. And yes, he actually called it the Holy Trinity. Much of his inspiration came from the American media industry where he sourced his raw materials. He saw that in the US, a popular book would get people to watch the movie, and then the movie would get people to buy the soundtrack, and that often all these companies, the movie studio, the record label, and the publisher were all owned by the same people. That's just a little vertical integration for you. Karakawa found that this strategy worked best for large franchises with many characters and interconnecting stories. And you see that strategy at work in many of your favorite series today. How many characters are there in Gundam or the Fate series, which is spread across multiple shows, mangas, dramas, and yes, light novels. Karakawa might have perfected the media mix strategy, but they didn't start it. It goes all the way back to the granddaddy of anime himself, Tezuka. In the 1960s, Osamu Tezuka sold the anime Astro Boy at a loss, because TV studios were unwilling to take a risk on an expensive animated series. Astro Boy went on to become an international sensation and more than made back his budget through merchandise and licensing. And that system remains the status quo to this day, which is why you can literally live off branded Evangelion products. The entire manga industry exists in stark contrast to American comics. While the massively successful Marvel movies haven't translated into a boost in comic book sales stateside, anime are basically ads to sell manga, merch, and now light novels. Many light novels come from the Japanese website Shousetsuka ni Naro, which means let's become a novelist. Started in 2004, Shio-Setsu.com is a free website where users can upload their novels and readers can comment and react. It was sort of like an archive of our own, but for OCs, do not steal only. The site gets over a billion page views a month and has launched some of the most popular light novel titles, like uh, I Want to Eat Japan Kreis, Log Horizon, Overlord, ReZero, The Irregular Magical High School, and the rising of the shield hero all got their start on Shosetsuka Ninaro. The website is so important to light novels and isekai that the term Naro, or Let's Become, is interchangeable with isekai. Monster Bunko, a light novel imprint from publisher Furabasha, exists exclusively to make light novels out of popular stories on Shosetsuka Ninaro. Reports have surfaced professional editors having to rewrite entire manuscripts after authors sourced from Naro, often without any formal writing experience, were unable to fill plot holes or fix pacing issues. Japan has a long history of being on the cutting edge of media. And light novels, which are a mashup of young adult, manga, fan fiction, and art, might be the future of literature. Japan is one of the longest tradition of popular literature in the world. 
The tale of Genji, written in the 11th century by the Japanese noblewoman, is often called the first novel. Takitori Monogatari, also known as the tale of the bamboo cutter or the tale of Princess Kaguya, is one of the earliest examples of proto-science fiction. In the story, we have a princess from the moon who is sent to Earth for protection during a celestial war. Sound familiar? Popular fiction and lending libraries have been a common part of Japanese life since the Edo period. Well, that's all we have time for today, ladies and gentlemen. That's the uh, history of light novels. Thank you so much for checking us out, and uh, you all know the rest, but uh, please, why don't you click the subscribe button? You know, maybe the bell icon. Yeah, I love those light novels too. And those uh, light novel titles like, uh, I can't believe I got sent to a Crunchyroll Isekai world where I have to do the history of light novels. Bye bye now.